Okay, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Uh, my name is Stefan Köln. I'm from Austria. This is my third time at the E2EVC. And the first time I went there was in Vienna, in Austria. Uh, I learned about Austria, so I thought, okay, I will go there. It was the only Austrian. It was quite funny. Uh, so Alex had this great idea that uh, afterwards there was a pool uh, competition, pool video. So I had to play against 17 German guys. So <laughs> it was uh, very interesting. Um, this talk is about Royal TS. Who knows what Royal TS is? Yeah. Okay. Uh, actually, it's a hamburger in Austria, in the German speaking area, it's a hamburger. And, uh, for a long time, it was the icon of the app. So I got funny emails like uh, every time I start your app, I get hungry, but I don't like burgers. Can you change it in a pizza slice or something like that? <laughs> uh, yeah, very interesting. Uh, about me, um, I go through the slides very quickly, so just that we know what it's about and uh, that we have some demos. Um, yeah, I'm in IT for 15 plus years, that means I guess I'm old or coming out. Um, I'm actually a systems and tech guy and consultant for systems and operations manager. And um, I'm also a Microsoft MVP for system center cloud and data center management, probably the longest name <coughs> uh, for an MVP title. Um, also, running the system center user group in Austria for a couple of months now, and uh, been quite successful, so if you have any system center related questions, you can also bug me about it, no problem. Um, my company, CodeForward.net, was established uh, in the year 2000, uh, uh, pretty long in the business, and uh, RoyalTS actually was released in 2001, the first release, I guess, so it's probably the, the oldest or longest available multi RDP client on Windows. Um, yeah, you can read about RoyalTS on my system center stuff on codefollow.net. There is my email address and uh, my Twitter handle. Uh, the slides will be available afterwards. A little bit uh, about RoyalTS, it's a mighty RDP client, so originally the first releases were just RDP. <coughs> um, it was available for free for more than eight years. Uh, the last three release, 151, I remember vividly, 50,000 downloads in two days. My internet connection was blowing at the time. Um, I switched to shareware uh, three, three and a half years ago, and uh, the shareware version is only limited to 10 connections, so uh, you can uh, organize multiple RDP connections or multiple connections uh, in RoyalTS, and the shareware version is basically fully featured. There is no other limitation except for 10 connections. Um, with 1.7, I integrated basic Hyper-V management. That was the first uh, step in, in the direction of dashboards. You will see later on in the, in the demos. And with 2.0, we had a big step forward in terms of UI, in terms of organization, in terms of data management, and in terms of usability. Um, in 2.1, we stepped ahead and not only RDP or web page connections, we also put in SSH, terminal based connections, uh, using SSH protocol and telnet. And 2.2 uh, actually is further putting in VNC, fully based connections, external applications, and performance view uh, if you're using Perfmon, uh, you should look at it. Uh, it's currently in beta, so the demo will be with the 2.2 in beta. You can download the beta, test the beta. Uh, so, apologies for any crashes or... In addition, I think it was... 
exactly a year ago, we announced that we also want to do a Mac version of RealmTS. So uh, I teamed up with Lemon Mojo. Uh, who here knows mRemote? <coughs> yeah, the author of mRemote, also Austrian citizen, uh, came to me with the idea to, to do a, a Mac version of an RBG client or an M remote client at that time. So I suggested, okay, let's try and force this and uh, make a, an RDP client or a, a multi protocol client for Mac, which is <coughs> compatible with uh, Windows version. So we did. Uh, it's currently in beta. Version 1 is just around the corner, so I guess in two or three weeks we will see the version 1 release of the Mac client. Uh, we also released an iOS client, which is a bit different. It gives you access to the to the Royal TS document, to the, to the configuration file, but it doesn't really establish a connection within the application. So it's not an RDP or <coughs> terminal or whatever client, DNC client. So it, it gives you access to the file and you can start <coughs> existing uh, clients like ITAP. RDP or uh, VSSH, for example. So it's basically just starting up with your configuration the existing application. So if you have already had some investments for your iOS, uh, iOS platform, you probably can reuse those applications with Royal TSI. And uh, Android is coming soon, so we are also working on an Android version for that. Okay, let's uh, compare uh, quickly what Royal MTS is about and how it's uh, standing in the market uh, compared to other products or to built-in products like the RDP client from Microsoft and Windows. So uh, it's probably safe to say that our RDP implementation is the uh, fully featured RDP implementation. No other client has so many uh, Crews and apps to to tweak, and uh, you can even you know uh, do the, the uh, control the, the keyboard layout on the remote machine, on the remote section. Um, we have integrated Hyper V and uh, session management to uh, kick out other users from uh, terminal services or to control Hyper V instances. And not only control half of the instances in terms of you know shutting down, starting up, you can also uh, remote control the, the console. Um, yeah, a big change in, in the in the version two was the complete revamped UI. We have the docking panels you may know from Visual Studio like applications. Uh, we have tabs, uh, long request feature. Uh, you can split the views, you can at any time, <coughs> every connection you have, you can quickly pull it out <coughs> into an external window, put it on a second screen for comparison, for example. I will show that in, in the demo. Um, there was a long discussion, should we do some database-backed configuration management and stuff like that. And uh, we decided to go a very simple approach with file based approach with the XML files, uh, but without any compromise in terms of uh, team sharing capabilities or uh, you know, syncing across multiple team members. I will demonstrate that, how that works. Yeah, the basic idea is you have a connection file without any credentials, without anything else, and you put that on a network share or on a Dropbox or whatever. Uh, one user opens it up, a second user opens it up, the whole team opens it up. Everyone can make changes, and uh, it will be synced across all the all the clients. Um, yeah, with 2.2, which is in beta right now, we have uh, a lot of additional connection types. I will show you in the demo as well. Uh, when you look at Royal TS6, uh, safe to say, uh, safe to say that this is. Uh, the most feature complete RDP client on the Mac, and we will hopefully uh, soon be able to, to put in uh, gateway support, for example. Uh, the 
files you create <coughs> on the Mac or on the Windows is com compatible on the other platform, so you can share the files. Uh, of course, the feature set of the uh, Royal TSX uh, is not as big or far as, as uh, the Windows version is, but uh, the files stay compatible. If you, if you save a file with the Mac version, you can open it. There's no problem with that. Um, also, the credentials, when you, when you put credentials into your files, you can easily share them between the platforms. We use the, the free RDP, uh, the, the open source RDP library uh, in the Mac platform, and the Mac platform can also do uh, VNC, SSH, Telnet, and Web. Uh, the external application thing, the performance view thing uh, of the 2.2 uh, is not included in, in OS X. Uh, the Mac version also don't, doesn't have any dashboard features like uh, controlling Hyper-V and uh, controlling uh, remote sessions. But we are also working on, on, on a solution on that so that you can actually control Hyper-V instances uh, from the Mac right here. Yes. As mentioned earlier, Royal TSI is a bit different. It's just, you can, you can call it a player. You can open a, a Royal TSX file and uh, look, at your, uh, look at your configuration. It's a read-only uh, solution, so you can read the files created with the Mac or with the Windows version. Uh, you have access to the credentials. You can start uh, other clients. There is no built-in uh, client. Uh, in the Royal TSI, but uh, I think the biggest advantage is it's free, so you can just, uh, if you have those files and if you want to use them on your iOS device, you can just download the, the app from the App Store. A couple of key features, um, easy management, especially the bulk edit feature, I will, I will demo it and the connect with options features gives you a lot of flexibi uh, flexibility in your daily operations. Um, the connection sharing stuff I will also demonstrate it. Uh, you can easily separate your credentials, your personal credentials from the connection file. So uh, you can share the connection file with everyone in the team uh, without giving away any of the credentials. And everyone has his own credentials and they just they resolve at connection time. All you need is just to, to set up the documents right and, and to to uh, Connect to the to the connection and uh, name the credential with the right name, and everything is, is good. You don't need any SQL Server backend or whatever. It's just file based, very simple. Um, nice feature is the switching between the embedded and external window. I will demonstrate that as well. It's available for our connection types. Yeah, the dashboards. Uh, we will. Uh, we have a lot of dashboard functionality already in in, in the Windows version. We will extend this uh, functionality <coughs> in the future. There will be more dashboards. There will be more, uh, you know, shortcuts, more uh, easy management in the dashboards in the future, and we will also bring them uh, to OS X. Um, very interesting <coughs> task feature. I will also demonstrate that. And we have currently there are two kinds of tasks. We have command task is basically just the command line which is executed, and you can inject. Uh, replacement tokens, variables from your selection. So if you right-click a, a server, a RDP connection or whatever, and you can start a ping command, and uh, the host name from the RDP connection you selected will be injected in that command. And you can do very flexible things with that. And the other, uh, the other task type we have is a key sequence task. It's basically a keyboard simulation uh, where you can type in the remote session uh, with your own macros, keyboard macros, or whatever. Uh, I will have demos for that so that you can get an idea how useful this is. Um, connection templates, very good. Uh, it's, it's similar, it's very similar to the task, but it's just like uh, you, based on one connection, you create another type of connection. Uh, I have a demo for uh, ILO cards, for example. You have all your RDP connections configured uh, in Royal TS, and you want to open a web connection to a specific 
URL based on that RDB connection. You can inject the, the host name into the URL and it creates a web page connection based on the selection. It creates a, a web page connection for the ILO interface, for example. And ad hoc connections is like a quick connect from uh, from the from the ribbon bar, so you have a template or you have a, a RDP connection, and you just want to connect quickly to Cellrex. You just put in the name and hit the enter key, and you're good to go. In 2.2, we have uh, a couple of other key features. We have uh, key pass support. Every, everyone, uh, anyone uses key pass for password management? Okay. So in 2.2, you can open key pass files, and you can seamlessly, like like it would be credential in Royal TS, a credential object in Royal TS, you can just refer to that credential. So if you want to connect to an RDP connection with a credential from your keypass file, it's very easy to set up. Uh, it basically works like, like a native uh, credential in Royal TS. We have also RDP 8 features uh, included in 2.2. There is some, some new stuff going on in RDP 8, like uh, the cache size is completely different because the, the protocol in RDP 8 changed uh, fundamentally and the cache size controlling is different. So on a 64-bit machine, if you connect from a Windows 8 machine to a Windows Server 2012 with the RDP 8, you have a memory consumption from 150 megabytes per session. If you do that with uh, Windows 2008 R2, you have 15 megabytes. So that's a huge deal and uh, uh, we, we built in a UI where you can control the cache size so you can, you can tell the RDP uh, protocol to, to use a, a smaller cache size. It will be you know, utilizing more bandwidth of course, but you have uh, less memory consumption in the machine. Also, shortcuts to charms and start screen and stuff like that is all integrated in, in the UI. Um, the VNC connection type is based on type VNC or ultra VNC, so it's not a, a, a strictly built-in connection type like, like RDP, so you need to install uh, ultra VNC or type VNC to make that happen. The terminal connection type is now optionally based on PuDi, so you can use the built-in terminal connection type we have already, or you can, if you're, if you're a fan of PuDi and you, you want this to behave like PuDi behaves, you can switch to PuDi. External applications is a quite interesting feature. You can now create connection types which are just starting applications and, if possible, you embed it into the UI. So if you have any management tools, management consoles, you can set them up in RoyalTS and you can start them from within RoyalTS <coughs> so you have it in, in a tab and you can use it like an RDP session, for example. I will show a, a demo of that as well. And the performance view is also very interesting if, you, if you're using uh, RoyalTS in your day-to-day -day operations and you want to troubleshoot or you, if there is an incident that you want to quickly see some performance indicators for SQL, IIS, whatever, you can use the performance connection view and uh, even better with the templating feature I, I will show off later, you can quickly create on the fly performance views for your servers with specific counters. The browser extension is something new we are doing, so uh, it's still a bit under, under construction, so I, I can show it off. It's basically, we are, we are providing a Chrome and Firefox plugin which allows you to access the credentials from Royal TS to log on to web pages. It's like we are trying to get password management and credential management uh, a bit more prominent in, in Royal TS and that's the first step. I, I can show off it in a day. Yeah, that's uh, just a quick overview of all the features. Let me switch to Royal TS.
just for the demo, I mean that's a bit uh, <coughs> I mean, I use parallel to virtualize a Windows Server 2012 Hyper-V machine, which in this parallels virtualized session, two Hyper-V machines were created, a Windows Server guest and a Debian Linux, just for demonstration here. So, if you download the beta, quick information about the beta. Betas are deployed as zip files, not as MSIs. So if you if you download a, a full release of Royal TS, you get an MSI and you double click it, it, it will be installed, you, it will be pre-compiled and it, it takes a, a, a bit, it takes a minute or two, but it, it will start quickly. If you download the zip, you can extract the zip anywhere you want to test the beta, you can run them side by side, you can the, 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 the full featured release, the previous release and the beta, you can run them side by side. Um, before you start it, I recommend you, you start the uh, NGEN CMD, which is included in the zip, which does the pre-compiling, it will just start faster then. So here is a Royal TS when you started, you get a getting started page, and it quickly summarizes how you how you get started with Royal TS and, and some, some basic concepts like when you start Royal TS, you have a so-called application document. The application document is always there. It's like uh, in the user profile. It's, it's holding the settings, the, the configuration of the of the Royal TS itself, and you can also use it for uh, additional objects. You can create your own credentials and tasks in there, and it also holds the default settings for all the connection types you have. So let me just open. Demo files. When, when we were talking about uh, team feature, uh, team sharing features, um, when you have a connection file, you can set up the connections, and I just show you how how an RDP connection is set up here. And if you look at the credentials configuration here. Uh, you see that you can specify credentials in in several ways. You can just use username and password, and you you specify a credential for this connection, for this connection in the connection itself. So there is no other thing going on. It's just saved with the with the connection. If you have one credential applied to multiple connections, it would make sense to create a credential object, which is uh, basically something like that. Just open this document. This is a credential object. You give you give the credential object a name, a username, and a password. You can do some other stuff like for SSH. You can do uh, SS uh, private key file assignment. And let me just close this document again because this connection here. is referencing a credential with a name. It's called E2EBC Windows. And this credential doesn't exist right now. So if I connect here, I get a prompt credential was not found. It suggests that the username might be E2EBC. I can you know, put in a username password here and I can just log on. But if I open my other document, where the credential is actually existing, and I connect now, it will find the credential and logs me on with my user. So if I want to share a connection file in, in a team, I set up each connection to look for a specific credential. Each user can create his own document and create his own credential. It just has to have the same name you're referencing in the connection, and it just resolves, and it will be logged on with the user credential. So this is actually the guest. If you look at the, let's just go, go through the properties, what you can do here. It's, it, it may be a bit overwhelming here, but there are a couple of things like, um, those things like credentials, where you can assign the credential, we just saw. You can 
uh, assign a connected task. For example, you have to build up a VPN or something, you have a batch file and you want to execute that batch file before the connection starts, you can do that here. You can select the task and you can wait, uh, you can select it should be, uh, right test should wait for the for completion of the task, it should only run if no other connection is active in, in that folder. Uh, and if the, the task is failing, if the exit code is not zero, abort. It, it didn't work and abort. You can do the same stuff for the disconnect to, for example, disconnect the VPN connection. And uh, the key sequence task I mentioned earlier is basically simulating keyboard input. So you can, for example, uh, specify a key sequence task after the connection was established successfully. <coughs> it should, uh, you know, type something in the in the remote session. The window mode. If you you, you have three. Three up to three choices, mostly two. The full screen choice is uh, currently only available in the RDP connection because RDP has this full screen mode. Um, usually, you can select between embedded, then it's just a, another tab in the UI, or external window, and it will be a separate window. So, whatever you prefer, you can control it here. If you go for external window, for example, you can even control on which screen the window should appear. Um, where is the position, I can specify the position, um, or it should just remember the last position, or the same with the size, you can create uh, a window with a specific size. Those, those settings here are basically available for all connection types. Those are always the same. Except for those, I mean, there are connection types which don't, don't need a credential or where a key sequence would not make sense and it's not there, but those are common, common settings for the connection. Then you have the RDP specific settings and you can, as you can see, I just quickly go over the most, most property pages are self-explaining and if not, we provide a lot of additional information and tooltips if you just hover the mouse over, over that stuff, you will see a lot of you know, the goal is you just don't need to go to the hard file as much as possible. So that's the primary goal. <coughs> uh, display options, I mean, that's self-explaining. Do you want the uh, desktop size adapted to the client size when you have the tab? Do you want a specific desktop size, uh, color depth? The, food, uh, the resize mode is uh, something special. This is not available on the Microsoft RDP. There is the smart sizing, which is scaling down. If you if you if you reduce the window size, it scales down. But the smart reconnect is something specific to Royal TS. It detects if the window size change and it just reconnects so that you get the new desktop size adapted to the window size. So it's self-maintaining. All the performance stuff you know from the Microsoft Terminal Service Client. This is the one I mentioned earlier where you can control the cache size. This is very, uh, this is RDP 8 specific. You can change the setting for RDP 7 or earlier, but it will not affect uh, the client. You can control redirection. I mentioned earlier, you can even select keyboard layout. Windows key pass through, so when you hit the Windows key, it is actually processed on the remote session, not locally. You can enforce that. You can start a remote program. You have the gateway configuration, and when you put in a gateway server, you have basically, uh, except for smart card, you have basically the same options as with credentials, so you can reuse your already existing credentials and use them for uh, gateway authentication as well. The Hyper-V property page allows you to control, you know, the, the connection you just create, is this a Hyper-V machine or not? If you select it as a Hyper-V machine, you will have a slightly different dashboard. If you look at the dashboard, you just see the, the remote sessions. So this is a standalone RDP connection. If we, for example, open the properties of this one, we see, okay, I changed that to, this is a Hyper-V host, show the VM instances in the dashboard. As you can see, as soon as I select the Hyper-V machine here, 
I see the exact same instance as you saw earlier on the, on the Windows Server 2012. The dashboard allows you to, you know, send a message to the remote session, like you are used in the, in the terminal service admin. I reset the session, you log off a user, you can even restart the server. Um, the dashboard of Hyper-V allows you to do some, some stuff with, uh, with uh, remote, with, with, uh, with uh, guest instance, for example, this is a Debian uh, thing, uh, Linux client, and you can, for example, connect a talk to the console, so it's basically, you're connecting to the, it's like VM connect, just without VM connect, so you have it in Royal TS, you have the remote session, the console, the physical, I mean, what's the word for that, it's a virtual console of the, of the host. Um, works, of course, also with the Windows host. As you can see, uh, it, it doesn't really fill the client area here because it's it's like the, the graphics that I've told me it's I don't know 800 plus uh, by 600 display, so you cannot control it like a RDP connection. So let's just explain a little bit what happens if you do a talk, like if you select something here and create an ad hoc connection here, or if you say something like create an ad hoc connection here. An ad hoc connection is like a, a, a session which is volatile, like as soon as it is disconnected, it's removed. It's like uh, a temporary session. So if, if you connect the talk, you will see that in the application document there is the ad hoc folder. You only see the ad hoc folder for if you have at least one uh, active ad hoc connection. If you close the session, it's gone. If you think you need that a bit longer because you work longer with that, you can just drag it to your document someplace. And if you close it, it stays in the tree and you can reconnect at any time. So if you if you have an ad hoc connection, however you got there with the ad hoc connection, if you need it you just drag it up and into your document and you have it there. Let's quickly go over the other connection types like VNC. I will not demonstrate VNC connections, but it's basically the setup is very identical to the RDP. You have those standard uh, connection properties. You have some specific connection properties for VNC, like encoding and scaling, mouse input controlling. And there is also this plugin thing because you can choose between tight VNC or ultra VNC. So if you want to have a different VNC implementation, you just switch it here or you switch it in the application settings. Anyone using here SSH heavily? Okay. So, if you are using SSH, if you click on an SSH connection, like here the Debian, uh, the dashboard is of course, differently because you don't have RDP sessions or hyper or whatever. So what we chose for, for a useful dashboard is uh, showing logs. A lot of people are doing logging while they are on SSH sessions, so when you enable logging and you have configured the log directory and you connect to the machine, everything is logged. If you go to the connection, you will see all the logs you've created during time. You can manage the logs here, you can delete the file, uh, the built-in, the Revex-based uh, <coughs> You can even record something like an ANSI video, like, uh, like a movie, what you've done, and you just hit on play and it replays your session in real time. You can speed it up, you can slow it down. So the Stop log it. is what you type. The log is about what you type. What you, you type about the server sent. Okay, so it's the, the old console, the, the, the terminal console. Yeah. Cool. You can export it from here, you have some options like 
displaying the log. I can I can show off the, the logging thing here. Let's go through the through the connection properties of a typical SSH connection. So you have a display name. The display name is shown in the tree. You can choose the connection type. In this case, because it's uh, the, the Rebex implementation and the Putty implementation, you have SSH, Telnet, or serial port. You put in the IP address or FQDN. Uh, the port, again, you have the, the credential stuff. In this case, you have an additional page to, for the private key, in case you need it. You have the same things uh, as RDP has with connect task, disconnect task, key sequence. They all look the same. But of course, the other settings are very specific to SSH. You can set up the encoding, the terminal type. There are a lot of settings you can do here, uh, like the new line sequence, the backspace sequence. You can control almost any aspect here. Uh, you can configure a proxy server, the display options, what font should be used, what size, what colors. There are more color settings you can control. The whole NC palette, you can tweak every color. So if you want another background color, you just choose one color from the color picker, or mix your own color. This is the recording feature I, I told you before. So if I set up a path here on my let's just make logs directory, I can choose to create a subdirectory for each connection. So it, it uses the connection name to create a subdirectory. So I have not all logs in one. Directory. <coughs> I can instruct RoyalTS to always prompt the for path if I want to choose every time where the log should be written. I could also uh, enable logging from the start, so as soon as I connect it will start logging, otherwise I have to enable it on the, on the action written bar. And the logging level can also be adjusted. And the serial port connection is available only if you do serial port you can, you know, the, the COM port configuration, the bulk rate and stuff like that. In the dashboard settings you can use, uh, you can you can control how the dashboard behaves, so as soon as, as you select the entry in the in the tree, it will retrieve all the log files, I leave it at that. So if I now connect to the Debian machine, Let's see, uh, I just hit record. I list all the files, start midnight commander, go in there, I exit. <coughs> okay. Stop the recording and disconnect. Now I see the log entry here. If I hit play, it plays back the whole thing. Is this playing back to, to the, to the remote computer? No. This it's a, it's a local representation. It doesn't interact with the server at all. Right, okay. It's just for documentation purposes. Can you not, can you not re re replay back directly? No. To, no. As a map. Yeah. Not, not in that way. But we, we have the, the key sequence task I can I can show you later on. If you select as a plug in the just a minute, let's go here. In this case we have a different plugin selected. We have the putty based plugin. And if you look at the property pages, most of the property pages are similar, but if you look at the specific, SSH specific, you see much more options. Those are basically all available PuTTY options you have in PuTTY, you can now have in Royal TS. Meaning you can also share them with other colleagues, so everything you set up will be set up for PuTTY. So you can, I don't know, you can tweak how the mouse should behave, the scroll back buffer, Telnet options, display options, font, external window, display. It's almost 
from the organizational point of view, it's almost organized like in PuTTY directly, so you should find all the PuTTY settings very easily. You can key exchange, authentication, GSS API. You can set up everything completely. Not particularly, but I know we're running out of time. I want to get the question in before we finish. One of the things that I'd like to be able to do is something like this: is the file with the configuration and credentials is to have that on Dropbox and then access it from wherever computer I'm on. So I can just download it, point to the file, my credentials, my credentials are there. That's easy with connections, but credentials are harder, right? When you secure them. Yeah, the credentials are private to you. Yeah. Yeah. Can you, is that possible with all this? Yeah. You, the, the, the file, the connection file, can be on a completely different location as the, the credential file. So you can have the credential file in, in, a, in another folder uh, in Dropbox where only you have access, and the connection file is in a, in a folder where the whole team has access. So that's the. Where is it all? In the shop? Yes. Um, Let's start up here. Let's do that with Royal TSX for the Mac. So, just to show you the document I'm actually I've actually opened here. is on, on a shared folder between Mac and, and Windows. So the connection file is actually on a location where my Mac partition has access to and the Windows partition has access to. So what I do now is open the very same file on the Mac. Syncing stuff, you need to go to the properties because it's not enabled by default. By the way, in the document properties, you can set something up like the encryption, the, the password so that every uh, sensitive information in the document is encrypted. And in the, in the document, there is, the, there is the option of two save modes, and the default is overwrite file on save, it's like notepad, the last one wins. And if you do the, the merge file on save, it's actually merging, so if you go ahead and I don't know, let's add a new folder on the Mac side here. Let's create a new connection. I saved the document here. I go back here and say just reload. See that? It's here. So this works with Dropbox, with FileShare, with whatever. So just to quickly go through the through the connection types, you can put in web pages like the admin web pages, or you know, in this case, it's the forum of our web page. So you have a, an autofill option where you can map uh, credential or connection variables to, to HTML elements. So as a consequence, when I click, it automatically locks me into the forum. And I'm also I'm already logged in and can work. This is the external application. In this case, I... <coughs> For demo purposes, I, I take Notepad, so I start Notepad and put it into RoyalTS, so I just do connect. Here we are. At any time, you, with all connections, you can just go ahead and say, I want to have this externally. Then you have your Notepad back, and you can just say, embed and it's in there. So, for your shareware, you say it's limited to 10 connections, and that 10 stored connections? Yes. Yeah. 
And how much is a public car when you just to buy it tomorrow? <laughs> 25 euros, single user license. And that's systems? It's a perpetual license. Yeah. So I also have a demo where you can do you know, management console. The, the problem with the management console, MMC, if you have computer management or stuff, stuff like that, uh, those executables are uh, started elevated. So you need to start RTS elevated as well to get this into the console because it's a limitation of, of the winnowing system. One cool feature I want to show you is the <coughs> it's like Perform on steroids. You can configure performance counters like you know processor time, I don't know, IAS request per second or whatever. You have a lot of displaying options and styles to choose from, even colors, and just connect it and it starts up sampling like you are used to Perfmon and you can also you know show the legend, export it as a PDF or image or whatever. You can tweak a lot of aspects, how long the sample interval, uh, stuff like that, so you can set up uh, performance monitors like that and you can just organize it in tabs as you wish. With all the other connections you can put it in an external window, you can embed it again. Does he have a dependency on, on the client machine uh, more? Or no. it's embedded? No, this is not Perfmon, actually. It's, it's, it's something that it's is embedded within the... Uh, yes. The same thing is for Puppy. It's all embedded. There, is no, there are no dependencies outside Royal TS. Yes. No. Dot .NET Framework? Dot .NET Framework, yeah, of course. It's a .NET application. If you, if you mean that, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out if there is any dependency outside the application itself. If .NET is a, is a requirement to install. .NET is a requirement, okay. yes. But no other applications. Mm, it depends. If you want to use VNC, you need to install TypeVNC or UltraVNC. We are not allowed to ship those things by license. But part instead, it's embedded. If it's installed, it's embedded, yes. It starts the execute, like the notepad, it starts the executable and embeds it into the RTS line. <coughs> Okay, so I need, to, I, I, I need to have the party executable. Yes. Putty is an exception because the license uh, terms of Putty allows us to ship Putty with our application. So you don't need to install Putty for that. Okay. And do you maintain also the Putty executable updates if there is a new version of Putty? Uh, yes, if a new version is available, we will, you, you will ship yeah, it with the new package. The next package will have to be Putty. You can also, you know, you, you are not. Uh, you don't have to use the Putty. You can at any time. You can open the plugin management here, mm -hmm. and you can go to terminal, go to Putty based settings, and you create your own path to execute. You can start your own Putty. Yeah. Okay. So I think we are out of time. Are we? Yeah. Yes. If you have any questions, I'm, I will be around for a couple of days here. And if you have any questions. Give it a try. Thank you.